Hello everyone, Walsh21 here and welcome to another unboxing slash how-to guide since I'm going to be fitting this as well in this video. Uh, here I have a Inatech PCIe 3.0 USB hub uh, thing. Basically it plugs into your uh, PCIe lanes and it will give you front panel USB 3.0 connectivity as well as a couple of extra USB 3.0 ports at the back which we'll soon find out now in a second. If I flick it over on the back here, you can see what's compliance with. So it's uh, compatible with uh, PCIe revision 2.0 standard and above, obviously, and uh, XHCI 1.0 standard. So if you use that at all, there's everything else as well that is uh, compatible with. And as you can see on the side here, it's a five port USB 3.0 PCIe Express card. Uh, with uh, one USB 20 pin connector for the front panel. So um, my a bit of history as I unbox this, my computer I built originally 10 years ago next month, uh, November 2007, I built it. Um, and because of that, I've got no USB uh, 3.0 plug on the motherboard itself. So I was looking for another alternative. So here we go, this is what is in the packaging. So we have a instruction manual. We don't need that for now. We have a disk driver. You can download it from the website. So if like me, you haven't got a disk drive, I've uninstalled mine since I've never used it. We have here as well, some extra um, power cables. Let's just rip it open and get into this. Sorry for the rustling. There's a couple of screws here to screw it in. So if you're still on Molex, you have the Molex power, which splits into two SATA, or you have one SATA to two SATA splitter as well. And then let's get to the uh, the main the main event, what we're all actually here for. So here is the board itself. PCIe connectivity on the front. You have your SATA power because this does require SATA. This is why if you're still on Molex. It gives you the Molex to SATA splitter. So no matter what, you'll be able to do it. And there is a 20 pin uh, USB 3.0. I don't know if you can actually see it, trying to get it on the light. So there's a 20 pins there. Uh, that is for the front panel USB. This is why I needed this. And then for a bonus on the back, you got five ports, uh, all USB 3.0, as you can see. In fact, let's flip it so it's the right way around. See, all USB 3.0. And yeah, so that is the little unboxing. Now let's get to installing it. So I just want to show you the back of my case. Sorry for the uh, wobbly hand, but I've only got two USB ports at the uh, top here for keyboard and mouse. That basically bypasses and allows you to get into the BIOS. Uh, so if you've got a keyboard and mouse. Got two USB 3.0s, and these are the standard, um, I believe they're uh, 2.0s. For some, whatever reason, they painted them red. And as you see, I've got no other USB ports on the back. So I've got six on the back. And then on this uh, lovely uh, NZXT H440, on the top here, let's uh, swing it around so the camera is the right way around. I have two USB 3.0s and two USB 2.0s. Obviously those two USB 3.0s I cannot use at the moment and then that is the whole point of why I was looking at this. So let's get into the case and we'll get on with it. I've just installed my graphics card and sound card so you can see the full board properly here. Uh, but this motherboard is the ASUS M4A A8TV Evil series motherboard. Um, I've got my manual right by here because I, I had to just double check on uh, which uh, lanes are which. So um, obviously we've got the top blue one which my uh, graphics card, uh, which is just by here, the uh, H, um, HD7950 uh, normally plugs into. And then at the top here then we've got another PCIe Express lane which this could plug into by the way, but I use a Creative Lab Sand Blaster which plugs into there. So what I'm going to be using, I'm going to be using this bottom um, here by 16 channel lane. Um, it will work, it's another PCIe lane. You could tell, don't know if you can see on the camera, but see this little sort of like uh, nudge here. If you look at all of them, the nudge is in the same place. So 
that's just letting you know. Right then, so the first thing we want to do is we want to line up where we're going to, to the outer one. So this second one here lines up to that. So that is what we want to uninstall. Um, I'm going to need to get the screwdriver here. Magnetic is better, depending on your case. So I'm just going to loosen it up. These are fun turn screws. That's just uh, the very first screwdriver I found, which is actually a very rubbish one, but it does a job. That's all that matters. So there we are, unscrewed, put that safely to the side. Take off the uh, motherboard's uh, back protector cover. And then we get our board. So we've got it here and we line it up. The little groove here lines up with our little groove there. Line that up. And then line it up at the back. And I've just noticed a small problem I'm going to have here with this board. And that is that one there. So be right back. I'll unplug that. Okay, I didn't need to unplug it, I've just loosened it up a little bit. It's my HD audio, so it needs to be plugged in. Right, so all I'm going to do is line it up, and because of that cable, just sort of like edge it so more cable will be loose, and then we'll just give it a small push. There we go. It is down, obviously that's pushing up because of the cable, but once it's in snugly, you push down, you get your screw, your fun term, or your actual screw, and then you screw it in place. And then from there, we then basically go into the computer. Uh, this is one of those dodgy screwdrivers. And we will be right back and I'll show you it working in progress. So on our last clip, you might have noticed that I didn't plug anything in. I realized when I was plugging in the graphics card power. So I've just taken the graphics card back out again. I've just routed my 3.0 cable through the bottom of the case by here, I had to use uh, the one slightly further away. Power, I've had right and through there. I've swapped it with the SSD power and used one of the extensions. Uh, so it's very, very tight for me on you, but obviously I just can't be, I just don't want to mess around with the cable management too much. So first things first, let's get the power plugged in. So this is um, your SATA power, the same as you would put in an SSD and most hard drives. So that plugs in like so. And now, hopefully you can see on the zoomed in camera a little bit, uh, there is a plug. This one here is the blanked out one. You can barely see it. In fact, you can't see it on the plug. And that goes along with the missing pin there. So what you do is you plug it in the correct way, making sure that it is in. In fact, that looks like it is in. And now we actually test. Sorry for the image quality here, but uh, it's the best way I thought of doing it. You can see here two USB 3.0 ports, two USB 2.0 ports that are on the case. So the two left ones are the 3.0 ones. And as you can see on my desktop here, oh, sorry, my folders for all the hard drives, my SSD, two terabyte drive and one terabyte drive are on display. Here is my eight terabyte external hard drive that I done the last video review on. And we are gonna plug that in. You can see the, uh, the eight terabyte drive just uh, lit up. And in a, a couple of seconds or so, um, it will pop up on screen, hopefully. Hear the drive now spinning up. You probably can't hear it because I've got my lapel mic on. And any second now, there we go. You can see it just popped up there. If I leave it, it should also, there we go. So that is my eight terabyte uh, drive. And let's uh, just bring you closer to the screen. Just to say, show you that it definitely is eight terabyte. It's shown as 7.27. That's uh, what Windows does to the drives. So thank you all for watching. And if you like this video, a little bit of a how-to and a great little product for £26 to basically bring your older systems up to the 21st century using front panel uh, USB 3.0 ports as well as giving you five extra USB 3.0 ports on the back. There are slightly cheaper options as well for this. Some do and do not come with the front panel, so make sure that it's got a 20 pin front panel port if that's what you want. Otherwise, you can just use the uh, rear ports as well. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the little bell icon so you can get notifications. Leave a comment. Let me know what you thought of this video. 
thumbs up and all the usual jazz. Thank you and ciao for now.